Today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of the Trimble DA2 setup and opening up of field maps for the first time. First we're going to start in our settings page, find our Bluetooth options, and then we're going to pair to the DA2 through Bluetooth. After we've connected to our device, we're going to close out of that and we're going to open up the Trimble Mobile Manager application. This is the application that speaks to the device that we're using. We're going to go ahead and pair directly to the Trimble DA2 here. Give it a few seconds. We have a Catalyst subscription, and that is what we use to gain high accuracy on the Trimble DA2. As you can see, we currently have a pool of hours. That's It's a on-demand system, so every time that we want high accuracy, we pull an hour out of our pool to be able to shoot features at high accuracy. So we're going to go ahead and start a session here, pull one of the hours. You can see it gives you a notification that we've started a session. We're going to go back to our main page here and we're going to give the device a few seconds to find satellites and show us our high accuracy here. All right, there we can see our accuracy has dropped down from 5 feet down to 0.03 feet. Looks like we're ready to start collecting features. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect here from the DA2 and close out a mobile manager so that we can have field maps open up the application. Now that we're here in field maps, we're going to go ahead and open up a specific map. We're going to open up our water map right now to collect some features in. Once we select a map, it's going to open up Trimble Mobile Manager in the background so it can talk to the device. That's why we disconnected previously so that field maps could be the one to open up and talk to it. Now that we're here in our map, you can see at the top we have our GPS accuracy. We're going to give that a few seconds to drop down. Now we got 0.7 inch accuracy using our Catalyst subscription. We're going to pan around a bit here on our map. We have all of our features here, you can see. Opening up our GPS details, we can get a little more information about our device that we're connected to, amount of satellites that we're using, our accuracy. At the top right, we have our Layers button. Here you can see all the active layers in your map. And you have the option to go through and toggle on and off layers that you uh, want to use or you don't want to see. So if you hit the toggle button, you'll see layers disappear. If your map is too crowded, you can do this. And then you can turn them back on when you need to collect features out of those layers. Closing out of that, the top right button here, we have a lot of options. A couple I want to highlight is the base maps option. We can turn on different base maps. And then this legend here. So if you tap on the legend button, you can see and scroll through all of the symbology of all the features here in your map. So this is very useful if, if you're using a map for the first time. You can kind of see what everything is symbolized as. Now we're going to go ahead and scroll over here to our current location. As you can see, we still have sub-inch accuracy using our DA2. Now we're going to go ahead and collect a new feature. So we're going to drop a hydrant right here, averaged to our position. And now we have the option to go in and edit any attribute information that we want to on this feature. Add a manufacturer here. It looks like we added a nozzle diameter. Scroll through and you can add a note if you would like to to the feature that you've just created. We're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and submit this feature and it's going to be creating a new feature here in our map. Now we're going to go ahead and walk over here. And so the button on the bottom right there, that little plus button, that is the add features button. We're going to go ahead and hit that again. And we're going to scroll through and find some 
another feature that we want to go ahead and add to our map. This time we're going to go ahead and add a system meter. You can see at the top there, once we select something we want to uh, collect, it averages our position five times and gives us an, the overall average. I think it usually drops it down by a little bit. Um, I think it was at 0.4 inches there. Looks like we have a required field that we need to go ahead and update before we submit this feature. Um, the lifecycle status there, we're going to change that to in service for this uh, system meter. It's a useful tool. You can make sure that you um, have some of your attributes set at required, so it has to be filled in before an item will be submitted when you're creating a new feature. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and pop over here to our sewer map. We're going to pan around and you should see some of our sewer features popping up here in a second as it loads. There we got some points and lines there. We got our, our gravity mains and our system uh, sewer system manholes there. We're going to open up our legend just to double check that that is correct. Those are manhole points there. Another option to figure out what something is, is you can tap on the screen and it'll pop up your list of features in that area on the left side and then you can select which features you want off of that list. We're going to go back to our location and we're going to add a new manhole point here, averaging across as we do in the top. We're going to fill out some attribute information here, fill out our location for the manhole point, uh, surface type, cover shape, things that we can see from the surface here. We always have the option to later open up this attribute uh, field again and edit any of these attributes along with add some new ones. So for the frame material, wall material, number steps, things like that, those will be added later when we do open the lid of the feature and do our inspections. That blue halo represents what feature we have selected here on our map. So you can see we've selected this manhole. We're gonna go ahead and hit the edit button and we're gonna snap it to our current position. So you always have the option to not only create new features with the and uh, collect their position with the DA2, but you can also adjust existing features with the DA2 to the things that have already lived in your map. You can adjust those and get sub-inch accuracy with the DA2. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new line feature scrolling to the bottom of the list we're gonna find our gravity mains here we're not going to use the DA2 right now to average because we want to snap this line in between our existing manhole points you can see as we move our crosshair closer to the manhole point it pops up that little dot that means it's gonna snap to an, that existing feature so now we've been able to create a new line snapped in between the two manhole points that we shot with our DA2. So we know that everything is super accurate with that. We got sub-inch accuracy for both those manhole points and now we're snapping our line to those features that we shot with the device. And now we have the option to go back in and add some information to the line that we, sh that we have created here if we ch choose to do so. 